So Bruce, today we're going to talk about unrealistic expectations. And the reason we're doing that is because we stumble on this video, right? Where this person is talking about, well, instead of describing the video, why don't we have our listeners watch it with us? Okay, let's watch this. If I have to ask you to help, that is not in fact helpful. That is in fact one more thing I have to put on my plate now. I now have to sit down and word vomit on a piece of paper, everything that needs to be done. And then I have to mentally take time and divide up the things that you could do. And then I have to spend the time explaining the tasks that I'm going to divvy out to you. And then I'm going to have to continue to answer your questions about those tasks because you don't know how to do them. Now you understand that when a woman says, forget it, it's just easier if I do it myself, this is why. Because it is easier, because we don't have to sit down and tell ourselves what to do and how to do it. Instead of coming and saying, what can I help you with? Come to me and say, let's break down these tasks more equally between us and let's set a minimum standard of care so that we both understand what it means for this task to be completed. And I won't have to ask you any questions. I will just know exactly what needs to be done and when it needs to be done to what standard of care it needs to be completed at. That would actually be helpful. Oh, holy, holy cow. <laughs> uh, so if I understand correctly, she wants somebody to come to her and say, let's sit down and write down all of the steps of the task that it is that I want to perform for you. Is that what she's saying? It seems like that's what she's saying. Instead of appreciating that the person is saying, hey, how can I help you? So there's no appreciation for that at all. Well, to me, the bigger it. thing is you have somebody coming to you asking, how can I help you? And yeah. you know what they're good at. You know what they're not good at. Mm -hmm. I would assume if you're in a relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not one for... Weeding and gardening. That's, that's not me. <laughs> I can't so, see you weeding and gardening. <laughs> <laughs> so I just don't like doing it. It's yeah. not interesting to me. It's not mm -hmm. fun. So if you ask me and we're out in the yard, you know, working in the yard, and I see you doing some stuff, I'll say, well, what can I do? Hmm. And I don't want to sit down for an hour and predetermine how it is that you want me to weed the garden. Mm hmm Right. If, if you want some help, I'll help you. Just tell me what to do. And then sometimes there are things that if we like them to be, you know, if you're really like you're systematic about the way you do things, like let's say you're mowing the lawn and it has to be this high and in a certain way, well, then do it yourself because the other person will never do it to your standards. Problem solved, right? But you can't, uh, I think, expect the person to do it exactly the way you want it. And then you're criticizing them because they're not doing it the way that you want it you want them to do and maybe they're not good at it and like you said maybe they don't want to do it because it's not something they like to do right well, it's, you go back yeah. to things like pillows on the bed or how we make the bed things yeah. like that like well you don't yeah. make it exactly like i want to make it well maybe i don't need it made that way yeah but right? we have to make a decision as what mm -hmm. it is that we want from life do we need our partner to make the bed exactly the same way i do or mow the lawn or vacuum okay. or dust yeah. Or, or load the dishwasher. <laughs> right. Or uh, maybe I'm focused. One thing that's really important to me is having the right air pressure in the tires. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. My partner probably doesn't care about that. Yeah, I can't expect my partner to, to have the same attitude about air in the tires that I do. So I guess the question we always have to ask is, are our expectations realistic or unrealistic? Yeah, it's a good question to ask because it seems to me in her video, it's more transactional, right? It's kind of taking the fun out of being in a relationship, right? Because yeah. now you're going to be sitting with your partner and negotiating things. And sometimes it's good to negotiate, but it seems here that it's something that could be solved really easily if the expectations are reasonable, right? Uh, if they're not uh, unrealistic. The one thing we always have to think about is whether or not our expectations are realistic or not. And we have a whole event on this in the Swipe Right program called Needs and Expectations. And the one thing that we bring up there is that, and there's a quote, expectations are in fact premeditated resentments. And that mm -hmm. is so true, but more so in the case if they're unrealistic. Unrealistic okay. expectations are in fact premeditated resentments. If I have unrealistic expectations, mm -hmm. I'm planning ahead to resent you about those in the future. That's right, because I'm not going to be able to meet those expectations Never. because they're not realistic. No. Right? So we're Never. setting up ourselves up for failure. Yeah, we are. Very much so. Yeah. So what we learn is that it's less likely that people are trying to disappoint us 
because a lot of people think that my partner's always trying to disappoint me, but far more likely that we're simply expecting too much from them. We're, mm -hmm. we're expecting them to be the superheroes that they're not. Yeah. And th th it's true because if we're in a relationship, I would think we're on the same team. So why would we think that our partner wants to disappoint us? It doesn't make sense, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're in a yeah. loving relationship, you don't want to disappoint your partner. So I found another little video from Simon Sinek here. So let's watch this one. You know, it's not about equal, it's about equitable. Mm, okay. Right? Like, great relationships aren't equal, they're equitable. Right? An equal relationship is I cook, you cook. I clean, you clean. I do the dishes, you do the dishes. That's, you know, that's an that's equal true. relationship. An equitable relationship is I'll cook, you do the dishes. I'll put the kids to bed, you take out the garbage. That's an equitable relationship. Right? We're not doing the same things. It's not equal. But it feels balanced. Right. And everybody's okay with the distribution of labor. Right? And we have to remember that there's nothing for free. Not a, there's nothing in this world that comes for free. And everything that you get comes at a cost. Always. And the only question is, is the cost worth it? Right. So that's an interesting video in the sense that he talks about equitable over equal. Mm -hmm. Right? And this is what we have to understand is our partner has the things that they do that they're good at. And mm -hmm. I have, you know, I have the things that I do that I'm good at. Yeah. And we're both busy. We both have lots of things to do. So if one day I find myself with a little extra time or I have some space in my life and say, you know, what can I help you with? Mm -hmm. As you mentioned earlier, it's not very nice to then beat them up for coming and asking to help right. you. Yeah. Exactly. So you I, should I, be appreciative, right? Yeah. You, yeah. you would think <laughs> yeah. that there'd be some appreciation. Oh, my partner's come and asked me to help. And yeah. give them something to do that you know that they might enjoy the most out of all of your tasks hmm. because they're and, now doing extra. Yeah. And if you're doing something that you know they're not good at, you could say, well, thank you for offering to help, but this is okay. I got it. Right? Good. So going down this road of, of realistic and unrealistic, we have some slides here that we can look at. Have you ever had any of these thoughts? Number one, if he loved me, then he would know what I need. Oh. That's a standard. I hear one. that a lot. Yeah, I yeah, we hear that, that a lot. What about yeah. if she were paying attention, she would know what I wanted. Mm -hmm. It can go both ways. Yep. I shouldn't have to ask for what I want. So many people think that, don't yeah. they? Yeah, absolutely. That one is, we hear, we hear that all yeah. the time. Yeah. I want them to come up with the idea on their own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want them to come up with my idea yeah. on their own. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically what they're saying. I want them to know what I want, but I don't want to tell them. I want them That's to figure right. out. I want them to guess. Yeah. And this is actually one that I know I had trouble with sometimes. If I tell someone what I want from them, then it feels like it's forced when they do it. Mm -hmm. And I know that is one. I mean, I've had that feeling myself. I don't want to tell you what I want. Mm -hmm. I want you to just figure it out because then it feels better. Because if I tell you what I want and then you do it. Then I feel like you're not doing it out of, you know, of your, your, own, right? your kind like, heart. You're just doing it because I ask you to right. do it. If I tell you I want flowers and then you bring me flowers, well, I don't want flowers yeah. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, this is why relationships are so hard yeah. sometimes, right? Yeah. It doesn't need to be that way, though. It no, doesn't it doesn't need to be, be but way. but they are. Yeah, they are. And it's our own doing. Yeah. Right? So are these all reasonable expectations? Is it reasonable that I shouldn't have to ask for what I want or that I want them to come up with the idea on their own? Is that reasonable or unreasonable? In a relationship, we both have a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And we have different ideas, different perceptions of, of expressing love, of, of feeling loved. Yeah. It, it's all different. And we have to make sure we understand that that we can't always read each other's minds. Hopefully yeah. over time, once you state your needs enough, your partner will become attuned to them. That's the idea, mm -hmm. but it's gonna take time. You mm -hmm. can't do this quickly. You're not gonna do this in a, in a short-term relationship. It, it's not gonna, if it does work, they're probably paying too much attention to you if you think about that. True. Right, That this could be the yeah. love bombing stage. Is I mean, they're just watching you like a hawk yeah. until they land you and then, you know, three years from now, they're not going to pay that much attention anymore. Yeah. Your slippers are not waiting for you yes. when you walk in the door. Right. Right? Yeah. So we have to be careful of that, especially early in relationship. 
So this story is a great illustration of what we're talking about, the butcher story. Yeah, we have this in the event, so I'll read it here. A butcher was really surprised one day when a dog walked inside his shop. He chased the dog away, but within minutes, the dog was back. So he took a closer look and sees a note in the dog's mouth. He takes the note and he reads it. Can I please have 12 sausages and four pork chops? I have the money to pay attached to my collar. The butcher looks and the money's there. So he takes the sausages, the pork chops and the change and places the bag in the dog's mouth. At this point, the butcher's really impressed and it was near closing time. So he decided to close up and follow the dog just to see what was going on here. The dog walks down the street and when it comes to a level crossing, he puts down the bag and jumps up to push the button. Then he waits patiently with the bag in his mouth for the light to turn. Next, the dog comes to a bus stop. He stopped the bus by lifting his leg and got on, as, got on as the driver checked the bus pass on his collar. The butcher got on the bus to follow. As the dog reaches his stop, he stands up and wags his tail to inform the driver. Then he jumps off the bus and runs to a nearby house. The dog opens the gate and rushes inside towards the door. As it approaches the door, the dog suddenly changes his mind and heads towards the garden. Goes to the patio doors, bangs his head against the glass several times, then walks back and waits at the front door. The butcher then watches as a big guy opens the door and starts getting mad at the dog. The butcher's surprised at this, and he runs up and stops the guy and says, What in heaven's name are you doing? Your dog is a genius. The man looks at him and says, You don't understand. This is the second time this week that stupid dog has forgotten his key. <laughs> I laugh every time. <laughs> this is a great story. That is a right? classic. It's a classic yeah. example of we get used to what somebody can do. We get used to all of the things that they do for us all the time. And we forget about those things. Yeah. And we don't appreciate it anymore. No, we so now we focus on what they're not doing. Yeah. Right. And that happens in relationships all the time is yeah. we, we stop appreciating the everyday things. Yeah. And now we only push them to do more and more and more. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be great if we could recognize when we do that? Because yeah. we're human beings, we're going to do it, right? Mm -hmm. But if we can recognize we're doing that and then kind of stop a little bit, right? And then back up and then think, okay, but they're doing so much more, yeah. right? So why can't I be appreciative of what they're doing instead of focusing on what they're not doing? Right. right? I mean, it's not about having no expectations of someone, or even those low expectations and allowing to be, you know, a dysfunctional or allowing to be abused in your relationship. It's about having realistic expectations. Now, that's the difficult part. What mm -hmm. is realistic and what isn't realistic? Now, let's go back even to that first video we watched. Is it realistic to expect my partner to sit down with me for X amount of time on every possible task we could do? and write out a worksheet on how to perform it perfectly. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is not a realistic expectation. Yeah, it reminds me of, you know, those charts that, you know, when you have chore yeah. charts for kids, yeah. you know, when you do this, because we're teaching them, but we're not, we're not the parent, you know, it, it's not, it, like I said at the beginning, it's more transactional. I think it yeah. takes the fun out of the relationship. So here's another, another video we'll get some feedback from. This is Esther Perel. Mm -hmm. You know, recently someone was saying to me, in my relationship, one person does all the cooking and one person does all the dishes. And, you know, it works out well for us. It's like, it's equal. And I said, no, it's not equal. It's fair. <laughs> because you don't do the same things that are distributed equally. But you have a sense that each of you basically is either doing the thing you like the most, or each of you is either doing the thing that each of you dislike the least. It can go in both directions. And that's so true, right? You Good can either, do the things yeah. you like the most or the things you dislike yeah, the least. Like, least. let's yeah, do the dishes. What do you dislike the least? the least? I mean, I don't yeah. want to do the dishes, but okay, I'll wash because I dislike that the least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather do that than maybe dry the dishes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. Do you want to help? No, I don't want to help. <laughs> I don't want to do the dishes. I don't want to vacuum. It's not something I want to do. I don't wake up in the morning and go, ooh, I get to do dishes today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all excited because I get to vacuum. Exactly. Right. So no, if we I can... would be a lot happier if we did what we like to do, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so once again, expectations are interesting. So there's realistic expectations. This is something that would be realistic to expect from a partner. Yep. There's reasonable expectations. This is reasonable to expect, but it may not be realistic. Mm -hmm. There's unreasonable expectations. We, we might want these things, 
but is it unreasonable to actually expect them? And then there's toxic expectations. These are expectations that could actually be relationship killers. Mm -hmm. And it's important that we were aware of these four different levels so that we can understand our partner and, and what's going on in the relationship. Yeah. So in the event, we're going to do a very brief, uh, a brief version of this here. So we, we go through this and everybody that's at the event, we, we talk about, you, you tell us what is realistic, reasonable, mm -hmm. unreasonable, and toxic. So the first one, this person will be everything that I was looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay. B is someone who enjoys sharing quality time with me. C is my relationship is what will bring me the happiness that I seek. And D, we are relatively equal in all aspects of the relationship. Mm -hmm. So we've got one of each on the screen. So let's start with A. The person will be everything that I was looking for. That's probably not realistic, is it? No, not at all. It's probably not even reasonable. Reasonable, yeah. Uh, be someone who enjoys sharing quality time with me. That's pretty realistic. That's pretty, yeah, and, and it's it's reasonable. Pretty reasonable. It's both. Yeah, yeah. Uh, C is my relationship is what will bring me the happiness I seek. Um, that's one of those ones. If you're expecting your relationship to deliver you happiness, you're probably going to fail. Yeah. Because, you know, it's just because you're in a relationship doesn't mean, remember, we when we talk about happiness, we yeah. know that it's not something that's external to you. Right. You create your own happiness. If you're not happy in the first place, then your relationship yeah. isn't going to make you happy. It's not going to make you happy. And we are relatively equal in all aspects of the relationship. That one is also reasonable, realistic. So I don't know which one would be the most realistic. Probably someone who enjoys sharing quality time with me. Yeah. That's a re realistic expectation, isn't it? Yeah, and that's what we have here. Yeah, uh, we're relatively equal in all aspect, aspects of the relationship. Relative being the key word. That's reasonable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, reasonable so to assume that. The equality, equity yeah. in there. Yeah. Uh, this person will be everything that I was looking for. That's probably an unreal, mm -hmm. unreasonable expectation. Mm -hmm. And my relationship is what will bring me the happiness I seek. If that's your attitude going into a relationship, that's probably going to kill your relationship. It can be very toxic. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we'll do one more here. So number one, I will always be my partner's number one priority. Mm -hmm. uh, my partner will consider both self and others when making decisions. Mm -hmm. My partner will love everything about me. Well, I've died. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and we will have similar ways of interacting with others on social media. So once again, my, I will always be my partner's number one priority. Probably not. Probably not. We can't be the first. And first of all, we you remember we always say put your oxygen mask on yeah. first. Yeah. You actually have to be your own pri your priority yeah. because if you feel good about yourself and you love yourself, then you'll be able to be in a in a healthy relationship, right? Yeah. So I don't think that uh, you part you will be the the priority, even though so people say that. And the second one is my partner will consider both self and others when making decision. That's probably a pretty good expectation, yeah. I would think. Yeah. My partner mm -hmm. will love everything about me, starting to get a little unreasonable again. Mm -hmm. And we will have similar ways of interacting with others on social media. We we have different personalities. We have different ways to interact with people. So yeah. it probably will not be the same. So, you know, we may have the same core values, yeah. but interaction might be different. So what do you think is the most realistic one on this page? Uh, let's see. I think B, you know, that the partner will consider both self and others when making decisions. Yeah. That's a realistic expectation to have in your yeah. relationship, that my partner mm -hmm. will think about myself and themselves mm -hmm. whenever they're making a decision, right? And which one do you think is the most toxic? I think the most toxic one here will be A. I will always be my partner's number one priority. Because... It just isn't going to happen. Your partner is always going to have or different times and points in your lives. You're going to have children. You have jobs. You're going to have so many things going on. You will not always be their number one priority. You'll be very high on the list, but it won't always. Mm -hmm. If you're going in assuming they're going to be number one all the time, you're setting yourself up for problems again. Yeah. Yeah. And it becomes toxic because now there's resentment, right? Yeah. Now, my partner will love everything about me. That's probably a reasonable expectation. 
Is it realistic? Probably not. Probably not. There's probably going to be some things that annoy yeah. them and they, they don't really love about you, but it's it's reasonable, but not really. Yeah. yeah, I think that they would accept everything about you. Yes. Right? And then again, everything, it depends. What if you're, what if you have uh, a behavior that's very unhealthy? They yeah. may not accept that, right? So. But then we have to deal with yeah. that. But then exactly. And then similar ways of interacting with, with each other on social media, that's probably unreasonable. You're going to have different ways of doing that. Yeah. In most cases. So what we try to express all the time at all our events in, in everything we do is the more emotional tools we have in our own toolbox and the fewer we need to borrow from someone else, the more secure we become and the less dependent we are on our partner. That's what codependence is, is when... I'm relying on you to mm -hmm. fulfill my needs. Yeah. Yeah. I'm absolutely nothing without you, right? It's like, I need you to be in my life, but in an unhealthy way, uh, because I can't function. Right? And, and going back to the yeah. first video or the initial video that started this, I need you to approach me and ask me questions this way and get it organized this way and structure it this way. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I'm just going to say I'm going to do it myself. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's unfortunate I find in this video because I think the intent is probably good about mm -hmm. talking about how we yeah. divvy up the chores, but it's the approach. The approach, the bad. tone, the attitude, it's, yes. it's all yeah. of that is, is yeah. not going to get get her the, what, what the she result wants. she expects. Mm -hmm. So when we eliminate those expectations that may be either toxic or unreasonable and accept that some are reasonable, but maybe not realistic, that's when we stand a much better chance of not being disappointed in mm -hmm. our relationships. Yeah. yeah. That's really all it is, is, is we've got to start reducing the expectations we have on somebody else. The more tools that I have in my emotional skills toolbox, the better communicator I am, the more I have let go of my past. Mm -hmm. Uh, the better I can deal with conflict, yeah. all of these things, the more tools I have, the better the relationship is going to be. Yeah. And again, as we said, it's not that we're saying you shouldn't have any expectations, mm. just make sure that they're reasonable, that they're realistic, right? So that you don't get disappointed. Yeah. Like, and also that your partner doesn't feel like, you know, you're putting all this pressure on them to perform all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's realistic to have a partner that will be affectionate, mm -hmm. that will be supportive, Absolutely. You know, that will be kind, that will be respectful. These are all realistic expectations. Mm -hmm. These are all things we should we should expect in our relationship. If we're not getting those things, that's probably not the right relationship. Yeah. It's not realistic to expect that our partner is going to be the best communicator in the world. Yeah. It's not realistic to expect they're going to be completely vulnerable. Because mm -hmm. they're not going to be. Yeah. Right? It's not we're realistic not. to expect that they'll always be in a happy mood. Right. <laughs> and they'll always be cheerful and oh this is a great yeah. relationship it's not realistic no so we have to make sure we differentiate and that's why we spend mm -hmm. that two and a half hours at the event is we go through what is realistic what is reasonable what is unrealistic and what yeah. is toxic yeah. it's a great event i find that people's eyes are just like wide open and yeah. they realize oh i didn't realize that this is what i was doing yeah and we so, explain all of the psychology behind it all so Anyway, okay, that's all for today. Thank that's you very much. That's all for today. All okay. right. Bye.